Sleep is still one of the great curiosities of medical science. Although it has been studied for over a century, it is only in the last 30 years that scientists have begun to understand its various stages and functions. The body expends much less energy when it is asleep. However, at several times throughout the night, the blood circulation to the brain rises and electrical and chemical brain activity increases. Dr. Horn, a practitioner for over 40 years, describes general healthy sleep. In the beginning you get this sort of light sleep and then you fall into a deep sleep. It's a sort of semi-aware state and you get what we call rapid eye movement so there's still lots of activity going on in the brain and then as the sleep gets deeper the brain waves get slower and, and you don't get eye movement and it's during the rapid eye movement that you get things like nightmares and, and dreams and so forth. Dreaming was described by Sigmund Freud as the royal road to the subconscious. Dreams have also been the source of great inspiration to artists. Paul McCartney, for example, believes that his song Yesterday came from a dream. Dr. Brewster, a psychoanalyst from Surrey University, described what a dream is. A dream is something that happens. It's a kind of mental state, a state of consciousness that happens at intervals during sleep. And during that state, we are aware afterwards when we remember it of things, pictures, images going through our minds. Sleep is an active process in which the body repairs itself and the brain processes the day's events and helps sort them. Every night we experience four or five cycles which are made up of various stages or kinds of sleep. Each has its own unique characteristic and is designed to maintain health and prepare us for a new day. These cycles were described by Dr. Brewster. Dreaming takes place at about at one and a half hour intervals during the night. We spend about a fifth of our total sleeping time dreaming. And that amounts to upwards of an hour, maybe an hour and a half for most people, which is quite a lot of dreaming. And that happens in about five, four or five phases during the night. We need to dream, and we all dream, but we don't all remember our dreams. Nobody understands why. Often, our dreams are straightforward and understandable, but sometimes they are confusing and quite bizarre. What's the strangest dream you've ever had? I once had a dream that my brother was married to my best friend and his microwave was kept in the fridge. Well, this one particular dream I had at one time, some friends of mine who lived in a house, and the house had been moved, transported all the way to the airfield, and it was sitting on the side of the airfield. And we were all in their house, and we decided to stand outside and watch the air display that was going on outside their, their house. So we all stood outside watching these... Great big red arrows going past and flying backwards and forwards. Then, suddenly, a great big huge saucer-shaped golden spaceship came over. And we saw it, and I dashed behind this hut. And one other person dashed behind the hut, but the rest was still stood outside. And they got beamed up by the spaceship. They went into the golden spaceship, and off they went. I dreamt that I was, I was at a party once with Sporty Spice, and uh, not a lot happened. We went on to another party. The strangest dream I've had is a recurring dream I used to have when I was younger. Um, it was when I was walking upstairs to my bedroom and suddenly all the lights would go out. And I'd try to switch all the lights on, but I couldn't. They'd all gone, all the bulbs had gone. So I'd run into my room, and at the other end of my room is a little lamp, bedside lamp. So I'd go and tr turn that one on, and it wouldn't go on. And then the door would slam, and something, some force was pulling me into the centre of the room and then suddenly I'd wake up. My strange dream would have to be running down a hallway made of tyres, and as I ran along, the tyres behind me were falling down, and as however fast I ran, the tyres were just falling behind me, and I could never get away from them. Everybody has their own unique perception of the world. This can make it very difficult to interpret and make sense of an individual dream. However, Dr Brewster here describes an interesting dream of one of his patients. She came to me for an appointment one day, and she said, She'd had a dream about falling into a hole, a deep hole, and then her father helping her out of that hole. Now those are quite potent symbols, and they illustrate some of these common elements that you may be able to identify in different people's dreams. This is an interesting dream, and quite ambiguous. It is, however, possible to make an interpretation. Being pulled out of a hole, you might interpret as a rebirth symbol. And the fact that her father was helping her out of that hole, you might choose to interpret as a transference symbol. That is to say, her father symbolizing her therapist, her therapist helping her out of her 
phobic anxiety problem and into a new phase of her life. Dreams can often be quite frightening and realistic, leading to feelings of helplessness. This is due to the period of sleep in which dreams occur. Dr. Fennick of the Roehampton Priory Clinic explains. Nightmares occur in dreaming sleep, and during dreaming sleep, the body is paralyzed. During the nightmare, you feel you can't run or you can't move. Indeed, you can't, that's because you're paralyzed. When you wake up, you wake up very quickly and cleanly, and the feelings of the nightmare die away rapidly. Dr. Brewster believes that nightmares can often be the result of anxiety we have held deep within our subconscious. Dreams of falling are very common. Lots of people have dreams of, of falling or of being chased by demons or by people of, of hostile intent. And I think they reflect the very basic childhood dreams of that type. The dream of being chased is a, a very typical anxiety type dream. It reflects some anxiety that we've bottled up, that we've pushed out of sight. The stages of paralysed sleep appear during our REM stages. Dr. Brewster defines the intervals of light and deep sleep. You get intervals of deep sleep alternating with intervals of rapid eye movement sleep in which the electrical activity on the surface of the brain is different from what it is in deep sleep and in which we know the dreaming takes place. Contrary to popular belief, dreams do not originate in any one particular part of the brain. In fact, several areas of the brain can often be active throughout a dream. When we return from the break, we will be discussing the effects of insomnia with Mario Lopez of the Health and Diet Centre. If you drink a lot of alcohol, if you drink a lot of coffee, especially with coffee, caffeine, it would keep you up all night. And it happens to a lot of people, they only have to drink tea and it keeps them up all night. So it is a very, very important factor. Dr Fennec will discuss the horrifying condition of night terrors. Night terrors are common in the population. It depends how old you are. If you are an adult, then about 1% of the population will have night terrors. If you're age 12 and a boy, then it goes up to somewhere, depending on the study, between 8 to 10%. We will also discuss how blindness affects people's sleep and their ability to function normally. Blind people who lose light perception lose their light-dark input to the brain so their body doesn't know when it's night and when it's day. And when you get the situation, your body reverts back to its own timekeeping mechanism. And unusually, the timekeeping mechanism is different from 24 hours. It's usually a bit greater than 24. So what happens in some blind people who lose light perception, their bodies go back to their own time, which is 24 and a half hour a day. And in effect, their bodies put on half an hour each day. So their body thinks it's one time, it's really another time in the environment, and the two don't run in synchrony. All this will be discussed after the break. Welcome back. In the first half, we discussed sleep and dreaming, but many people can't even get to sleep. Four out of five adults complain that they sleep poorly. Furthering our insight into sleep, Dr. Horn now proposes several different causes of insomnia. It can be either physical causes, physiological causes, psychological causes like anxiety, and uh, psychiatric causes like depression and schizophrenia, pharmacological causes which is drug-induced. A number of drugs can keep you awake, uh, things like ecstasy, you know, things that hype people up and then they can't sleep afterwards. Stress is the most common factor when dealing with insomnia. Mario Lopez suggests several different ways to deal with this. One of the things about insomnia is that many people try to do too many things at once. They forget about their diets. A lot of it is to do with stress. So you need to look at ways of dealing with stress, stress management, and also uh, nutrition, and different therapies. Um, things like aromatherapy and also backflower remedies can help a lot. Herbal remedies are becoming more and more popular in the treatment of sleeping disorders. This is because conventional medicine can often have serious side effects but those who don't use herbal remedies are often unaware they exist. There's always been a huge wide variety of herbal medicines which can be used to treat sleeping disorders. Uh, one of them being valerian, which is widely used, passiflora, um, oats, cava cava, uh, St. John's wort, are herbs that are now used uh, mostly on sleeping disorders. 
A medicine called melatonin is often prescribed to people who have trouble sleeping. This is a hormone that is produced in the body. Stephen Lockley from Surrey University explained the functions of this important chemical. Melatonin is a naturally occurring hormone. It's produced in the pineal and until about 10 or 15 years ago its role was thought to be um, quite minor in humans. But work pioneered here at the University of Surrey by Professor Josephine Arendt found that melatonin is very important in signalling to the body when it's night and when it's day. The pineal gland which produces melatonin is also known as the third eye. Stephen Lockley here gives a description of how this gland has evolved and its functions in its present state. The pineal, which is the gland that produces melatonin, is sometimes called the third eye because in certain animals such as lizards it is light receptive and the light that it receives comes in through the top of the skull. Birds have this as well. What's happened in, in mammals and especially humans, we've become a bit more advanced and the pineal has become a less important organ for the collection of light in humans. The eyes have taken over that job and the humans have, have separated the body clock part into a separate part of the brain. So in lizards and birds, the pineal that produces melatonin is also the body clock. In a sighted person, it is easy for the body to know when to produce melatonin. Problems can arise, however, in blind people who have no light perception. The pineal gland secretes melatonin randomly. This can cause great distress and anxiety to the sufferer. Stephen Lockley carried out a study at Surrey University. So we did a detailed study of 50 blind subjects and looked at all their different body rhythms for a whole month. We looked at things like their sleep-wake cycle, their activity cycle, their mood and performance rhythms, and also looked at a hormone called melatonin. Now this hormone melatonin is usually produced at night and in sighted people it's always produced at night and is stopped in the day. In blind people with this type of body clock disorder it can be produced at any time of day and it's one of the ways that we think the body knows when it's time to go to sleep. So if the melatonin is produced in the day the body thinks it's night time and then tries to go to sleep. For severe cases of sleeping disorders such as insomnia caused by blindness melatonin can be useful. However, many other healthy adults can sometimes experience chronic overtiredness or lethargy, the origins of which may be overlooked. Mario Lopez of the Health and Diet Center believes it comes from modern living. In today's life where we live very, very fast lives, we neglect our food a lot. We, we, want, we tend to snack a lot. We tend to go for very fast um, foods, processed foods, which are high in fat, high in, in saturated fats, and they clog up the liver. Um, they deplete your body of, of the vitamins, of the minerals. So it's very important to go on things like fresh fruit and veg. Dealing with lethargy can be a difficult task. If it is caused by a poor diet, it can be possible to detoxify your liver. Lethargy sometimes is usually an overloaded liver and colon. So if you have a lot of toxins in your system, you might feel quite tired and I would advise people to go on a detox diet, trying things like milk thistle, dandelion, drinking more water, which can help. Sometimes sleeping disorders can become very severe. Worse than even nightmares are night terrors. Dr. Fennick from the Roehampton Priory Clinic has studied the condition for several years. In a night terror, you sit up and you scream and scream and scream. Now, because it's so common in childhood, the mothers usually get very upset with their screaming children, which is not surprising. And they will pick them up and wake them up and take them into bed with them. Now, that's not a good thing to do, because if you just uh, reassure the child and lie him back again, then he will stop screaming, and in the morning, he will know nothing about it. Nightmares consist of terrifying images which can disturb the dreamer. However, these images fade quickly on waking from the dream. This is a different condition to night terrors. In a night terror, it's quite different because you can get up out of bed and run about, and also you're in a confused state. So there's a significant difference between night terrors and nightmares. Night terrors occur at very specific stages of sleep. Through many years of research, these stages are beginning to be understood. Night terrors occur in stage four sleep. They usually occur about one and a half hours after sleep onset. And 
as you move from deep sleep to dreaming sleep, you will move into a night terror. Now, the physiology of deep sleep is that your memory functions aren't working. And so, uh, quite often, people don't remember anything about the night terror. Even though night terrors occur in the minority of the population, it is still a very serious condition. Night terrors can be very serious because as you're not paralyzed in stage four sleep, you can be driven by these feelings of terror. So you can get out of your bed, you can run downstairs, leaping downstairs at the time, break your ankle, you can run through plate glass windows because you're so frightened. So they can be very dangerous to the sufferer. Night terrors can pass from the world of the imagination within your mind into reality. The severity of this condition has led to some terrifying and tragic situations. There's very little imagery. People talk about black holes, devils, a malignant shape. It's all very formless without much imagery. One man, reported in the literature, woke up from a night terror and felt that he was surrounded by devils and that if he didn't kill himself, they would kill him. So he took a knife and stabbed himself. He told that to his wife as he was dying. It can be a very small and seemingly innocent situation that will encourage a sufferer to have an attack of night terrors. The cause of night terrors is multifactorial. That means there are several different causes, although, of course, not all of them are equally important. The first and major cause is genetic. Night terrors run in families. And although you can have night terrors without a family history of them, it's unusual. The second cause, if you're prone to having night terrors, is tiredness. Tiredness before you go to bed may evoke a night terror that night. Even though the basic causes of night terrors are understood, the condition is still incurable. However, it is, to a certain extent, possible to treat the illness. The treatment of night terrors is difficult. If the night terrors aren't too severe, then quite simply you can comfort the child or the adult and put them back to bed. If that doesn't work, then you can wake them up before the phase of sleep when the night terror would develop. So that's waking therapy. The next thing you can do is to give them a tranquilizing drug. And finally, probably the best treatment is to give the drug called propanolol. Propanolol is a drug which is a beta blocker. That means that it stops the effects of anxiety. There are many areas which encompass the world of sleep. Breaking just the surface of this world, we have discussed conventional sleeping experience, such as dreams and nightmares, but also the chronic disorders, such as insomnia and night terrors. If you or someone you know is experiencing problems with sleep, contact your doctor for advice. Do not follow any general, nutritional or medical advice without discussing it with your medical practitioner.